Welcome to Clinarc Talks, where we have discussions about community health and clinical trials. This interview is sponsored by Former Therapeutics. Former is a clinical stage biopharmaceutical company focused on therapeutics to transform the lives of patients with rare diseases such as sickle cell disease. Former is currently seeking sickle cell warriors to participate in their newly launched hibiscus study at Advanced Pharma in Miami, Florida. At the end of the video, we will mention contact information so that those who are interested will be able to learn about the study. Today, we are pleased to welcome Dr. Kimberly Cruz from Advanced Pharma to tell us about herself, what inspired her to become a physician, and her work in clinical research in Miami. Dr. Cruz has been in her current role at Advanced Pharma for over two years, if I'm correct. However, she has held many different roles during her medical career, ranging from principal investigator to pediatric physician and even a research specialist. So let's go ahead and dive into it. Dr. Cruz, tell us about your experience working at Advanced Pharma. What type of clinical trials have you worked on thus far? Well, I've been with Advanced Pharma since uh, spring of 2018. Um, I am the principal investigator. That's my official title. Um, I've done a multitude of studies, um, including Sjogren's disease, rheumatoid arthritis, IBD, eczema, psoriasis, liver failure, renal failure, and other indications. Nice, nice. Uh, um, so... What, what drives you to help people with sickle cell? Um, you know, people with sickle cell, they just want to live their best lives. And um, they want what the rest of us want, a good education, a career, a family, and a long, rich life. Um, and, you know, why shouldn't they have it? Um, unfortunately, I have seen um, in many cases where um, individually, individuals are profoundly affected by this condition. Um, they've been denied these things one way or the other. Um, I think sickle cell is a fascinating relic of the story of the African American um, or the diaspora, um, if you might want to call it. Um, but in this time of amazing technological achievement, I think it's something that we should be able to resolve. Absolutely, I agree with you on that one. Um, so what, what are what are some of the barriers that you personally see when it comes to informing patients with sickle cell about you know clinical trials that are available in your area? Um, I think most of the time uh, there there are some specific barriers. Um, firstly, uh, people may not understand that no one can make them participate in any procedure that they don't want to participate in. You know, for example, if you say yes to a study, it doesn't mean that once you sign that informed consent paper that you can't say no. You can always say no. Uh, I think people don't know that. Um, secondly, uh, if you sign the informed consent that you want to participate and you change your mind, you change your mind. You don't have to give me a reason why you change your mind. You don't have to explain yourself to anyone. You simply say, hey, you know what? I decided this is not for me. Thank you, but no thank you. And, and no one's going to think any less of you um, if that's what you choose to do. Um, I think that um, people do not realize that in the ICF, it's outlined what procedures happen on what day, um, how long it's going to take, what their compensation may be. That's all in the informed consent agreement. Um, and then I think most people in our community, um, most people of African descent, most people who live in America uh, is, are very familiar with the Tuskegee experiment. If they don't know anything else, they know that. Okay? They know the Tuskegee experiment and they know the Tuskegee Airmen and that's all we know about Tuskegee. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, everyone knows the Tuskegee experiment and, and how horrifying it was. You know, and, and now um, people are becoming more aware of Henrietta Lacks and how her HeLa cells were um, taken without her consent. And there are some other um, really glaring instances of um, unethical medical treatment that were perpetuated upon people that look like us. And so that gives people pause. Um, but those things are not likely to happen today because research is held to ethical standards. Researchers are held to ethical standards. Um, there is a whole board 
you know, of, of people watching to make sure that studies are run in the correct ethical way. So what, what was done in the past would not fly today. And if people are not aware of the regulating body, then they don't know that that can't happen again today. Um, so those are the barriers that I usually see. Nice, okay. Well, you hit all the points. Um, so, you know, I know you have a lot to do, so I'll, I'll wrap it up with one more question. Uh, what, what, what actions do you think could be taken by patients or doctors um, try, that are trying to overcome these barriers? Um, I think that there are two specific things we can do. Um, I would say that we need to keep things transparent. Um, and the way we remain transparent is to, uh, we, we present the informed consent document to the potential participant. We let them take all the time they need to read the entire document. We, you know, you can even take a copy home to read it and to decide with your family and your doctor if this is something that's appropriate for you to participate in. Um, I think that that dispels the, um, the, the mystique, you know, this is the experiment, this, this is the procedure, this is what we're doing, there are no secrets here. I think that's the most important thing. Um, and people need to know that they have always have control over what's happening to their bodies. Um, I think those are the two, the two major things that we can emphasize to make people feel more comfortable. And also, um, I would say we should probably um, reemphasize that participating in a clinical trial is just that. It's a trial. We are not promising a cure. You know, sometimes we do have people who come and they expect that we have a cure, and if, if something works, then they get the prescription to the cure. So we also have to explain the process of how um, an investigational product gets approved by the FDA sometimes. Awesome. Yeah. All right. I can't thank you enough, you know, for, for taking the time out to, you know, do this. Um, you know, to everyone that's going to be listening to this, thank you. Uh, Dr. Cruz, thank you for the work that you're doing in Miami um, and, you know, your, you know, continued efforts in trying to advance, you know, the research around sickle cell. So, you know, I appreciate you taking this time and I hope you have a wonderful day. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Have a good one. This episode of Clinic Talks was sponsored by Former Therapeutics Hibiscus Study. Former is currently seeking sickle cell workers in Miami for their newly launched study. This study kicked off last month, and anyone interested in learning more is encouraged to consult with their physician or reach out to Advanced Pharma's research site by calling 305-220-2727 or by visiting advancedpharmacr.com for more information. You can also email us directly at clinarctalks at clinarc.org. Thanks again for listening and to our sponsor, Forma, for their work in sickle cell disease and increasing clinical trial access within the community in and around Miami. Thank you.